Hey what's up guys, it's Nick2, and today I'm going to be showing you guys an extremely strong deadshot build that takes advantage of both dark magic and cryo damage to be able to dish out ridiculous amounts of damage, allowing you to one-shot bosses with all kinds of different spells, as well as dealing some super insane damage with your guns to just completely melt everything. My favorite part about this build is that it's actually incredibly versatile, there's like a ton of different ways that you guys can set it up, some of which are very easy and don't really require a lot of gear. You also have a ton of options when it comes to what spells you want to use. If you have a certain preference, you can just slap that spell on and it will do some pretty good damage. So that ends up making the build a ton of fun to use for different scenarios. You also can actually have a crazy amount of survivability as well if you choose to. Overall, the build is a ton of fun to use, just constantly spamming my spells is some of the most fun that I've had in this game, and I really hope that you guys enjoy it just as much as I do. This build is also going to be absolutely perfect for clearing chaos chambers insanely quickly, so I'll have a super fast chaos chamber 35 run at the end of the video, so stick around if you guys are interested in seeing that. Otherwise, let's just jump into the build. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one. Also, there will be a Clawbringer build, which will probably come out tomorrow or the following day, so make sure to be on the lookout for that. All right, so let's jump into the build. Everyone say hi to Kitty. <laughs> Climbing over there. All right, so um, like I was trying to mention earlier, there's multiple different ways you guys can set this up, and it actually kind of depends on your preference. Ultimately, what I have set up right here, I don't think is perfectly optimal, and I'll explain why. It kind of has to do with my class item, but that's where there is a lot of variation. You can set this up with a pure pixie build that's fully going to build into those and have those absolutely decimate everything. You can have kind of a half and half setup, which I have, where the pixies are really good as well as the spells are really good, but it's not built into one or the other super super heavily but mainly i wanted to have my spells do pretty good but there's another version where you could have it be pretty much only your spells doing an insane amount of damage and the pixies are kind of on the back burner and they're kind of just there the main difference in how these builds are set up between each other is using the class item. So the reason that I call this build a dark cryo build is because I'm using a class item where it's going to convert 30% of my damage dealt to dark magic damage. The reason for this is previously I was using like a full all dark magic damage setup and ultimately that build just isn't all that great if you're using like a dark magic spell and you can't get dark magic pixies in this game and what i really wanted to do was i really wanted to use the double knot class item as well as having blast gasp the problem with that though is that if you want a class item that's going to convert all of your companion damage to dark magic damage it can't actually roll with spell shot primary so it can't get double knot therefore i could not get blast gasp and double knot that build is still a very good option for you guys that want a full dark magic build i'd recommend just watching my previous video on that the build's actually really really good I, the only difference is that instead of using uh, Dire Sacrifice, you just want to use Reaper of Bones now for the action skill active enchants. But regardless, that's why I went down this route, and ultimately a lot of the dark magic stuff just isn't as good as the frost stuff. You also just can't get a dark magic pixie as far as I know. I have never seen one of those drop, and I don't know, I've literally never seen a picture of it. I've asked people, I think I asked in that video, and that video has a good amount of views, and <laughs> nobody has it. So... If that, if that just existed, this could be a full dark magic build. But anyway, this is why I wanted to do dark cryo, because I have a cryo pixie, and the cryo spells are really good, as well as taking advantage of the new soaked effect with the delusion. I'll talk about some of the other options that you guys have in terms of the class item, because ultimately, I don't think that this is perfect. This is kind of, I kind of just want to do this for the fantasy of it, I guess, to be able to tap into both uh, elements. The problem with this class item, though, is that it does not work with your spells. So if I do damage with my ice spike, it's not going to actually do some dark magic damage as well. However, it does work with the pixies. Just thought I'd uh, jump out and get that out of the way so you guys understand why this is a dark cryo build, but I'll talk about some other uh, class item options that you guys have in a minute here. First off, let's talk about the skill tree. So obviously, uh, because we're dark cryo or whatever, we're going to be graveborn, and that's why we're getting a lot of the extra dark magic damage. Uh, but we'll talk about the skill tree in a second in terms of the class hero stats or whatever you just want full crit damage full crit chance ultimately that's what's going to be best and then i go skill spell cooldown because i want to just spam my spells as much as humanly possible if you don't really care about this i guess you could go max hp ward for survivability in terms of the class tree so like i mentioned earlier i really wanted to take advantage of both double knot and blast gasp Double Knot, you can see that I don't actually have it specced in, but I have it on my class item, so I'm still going to be taking advantage of it here. Double Knot, if you guys don't already know, is incredibly broken. Basically, whenever your spell gets a critical hit, it's going to deal extra damage. That's going to double dip off of all of your extra damage modifiers, and this is going to end up doing more damage than the actual initial hit of your spell. Blast Gasp already did that, so basically this is just Blast Gasp 2.0, and we're taking advantage of both of them simultaneously, which is not only going to work with our Pixies, but also with our spells. So it's going to enable us to just do a whole bunch of different damage and tap into a lot of extra damage multiple times. Uh, the reason that I'm not capstoning spell shot is that I really wanted the Graveborn capstone for Morheim's Blessing so that whenever we are in a boss fight, we're going to proc our kill skills such as Harvest and Ascension. Harvest is incredibly good, gives you a whole bunch of extra damage. It's currently bugged where whenever you enter a portal, it's going to keep stacking up. So this is really, really strong. 
but even without the bug it does a whole bunch of extra damage because it's going to pull from all the extra dark magic damage that you're scaling so that's really good um, and then Ascension is also a really good kill skill. It's going to give us just a lot of extra spell damage. So Warheim's Blessing overall really good because we're going to be spamming our spells. So it just gives us way more uptime and I just like it more. But Lord of Edges is also pretty good. Also, the other reason for this is that the ones, uh, the Double Knot class item will actually give you spell shot power. And that's going to be better than Graveborn power. Graveborn power will scale Blast Gas damage. I've been told that that actually doesn't do anything though. I've told that that function of the Graveborn power doesn't even work, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but um getting the spell shot power for the spell power is better anyways or spell damage i should say you do lose out on one slot one kill and the extra gun damage here does scale up double knot but it's not that big of a deal in terms of what we're specking crit chance for the spell crit chance really good uh, magic bullets i just do this as a comfort pick because i always have, have had it on and i don't want to risk anything not working because this build is funky or sorry this build this game is funky with things not working and stuff like that i got the reload speed here you could put some of the reload speed into phantom man if you want lower spell cooldown a uh, glass cannon for extra spell damage, but if you want more survivability, like always, take this off and put on mage armor, and then also swap out your ward. We'll talk about that later. High thread count, of course, for the extra spell weaving sacks. In the Greyborn tree, you have a good amount of different ways that you guys can set this up. Ultimately, what I have, I kind of like, but it's kind of up to you. Faithful Thralls is pretty good. We're not taking advantage of it too much. We do have our hellish little companion guy, and we can get um, some Dark Hydras to spawn with uh, Morheim's Blessing, so we can get a little bit of Faithful Thrall stacks there. But if you want like insane damage, you could use a, a Hydra spawning interior weapon, throw them down, and then use your spells, and then they'll scale off of the Faithful Thralls, and that'll be really good because it's a global damage modifier. So that's awesome. Essence Drain for the spell cooldown rate. Depends on how, many, how much spell cooldown you actually want, if you want to put a whole bunch of points into this. I like putting max out because I just want my spells up super often. Dark pack for extra dark magic damage is pretty good here. Harvest, really good. You definitely want to cap out harvest. Sanguine Sacrament, I put two points in for the survivability. I don't really think that you need any more than that, and it ends up being pretty good. Dark Hydra, I just have one point here to proc Faithful Thralls every once in a while, but you don't really need it. I played the Stain of the Soul before. I can't really tell if I like it all that much or not. It's probably ideal to, if I wanted full damage, it would probably be better to just take out Dark Hydra, take out Sanguine Sacrament, put like three or four points here, and then whenever I'm at a boss, just throw down the uh, Virior companion weapons to just stack a Faithful Thrall so I don't need Hydra, but whatever. Uh, Ascension here for the extra spell damage and max health, really good for survivability. Lord of Edges, just overall damage and damage reduction, Blast Gas, you already know, and more Heim's Blessing. Getting into the guns, so of course, when it comes to the Pixies, you guys already know about this. You want a Fear Knot or a Bloodshot Shotgun. These are your two options here. These are gonna scale off of spell and companion damage. Therefore, they are going to do spell damage, therefore proccing uh, Blast Gasp and Double Knot. For the uh, Furior that's going to count as a companion, you want a Want Knot. This is going to uh, throw in weapons, explode, and turn into a multi-headed Hydra. The multi-headed part is really good, and these will work for Faithful Thralls. For your other weapons, I have a Delusion. Anytime you deal damage to an enemy, they're going to be soaked, and they're going to take 50% extra frost damage, so ultimately very, very good for this build. This is another reason why we want to go frost mainly, and then kind of dark magic after because we're scaling our frost damage and then we're trying to convert 30% of that into dark magic and then get that extra dark magic to scale off of other things such as in our skill tree and uh, enchants. So this is going to help out with that. The extra frost damage is really, really good there. And then I always have a master cambo on hand just to spam reload to get um, a bunch of spell weaving stacks. In terms of the class item, like I mentioned, so uh, obviously I have a corrupted plate mail, convert 30% of the damage out to dark magic damage. Like I mentioned, I don't think that this is ideal. I kind of am just doing this because I think that's cool and for the fantasy of it, but ultimately what's best will probably be, so if you want to do a full spell damage, you have two options. One of which is having a warped paradigm where ability damage is increased by 50% of your spell damage. This will scale up blast gas damage to hit really, really hard, but you're kind of reliant on blast gas proccing at that point. The other option is you can get one where you're standing still and it's going to increase your frost damage by 50% and your crit chance by 50%. And that's really, really good because double knot is actually going to uh, require you to get a crit to proc. And then you're not reliant on blast gas. You're kind of scaling up your double knot there and your, and your blast gas actually, because you're just increasing your frost damage which is increasing everything although it does require you to stand still but honestly if you walk up to a boss and you you're pressing both of your spells it's pretty easy to stand still or make sure that you're standing still whenever you do that another option is a smart armor for the critical hit damage but reducing the crit chance is unlucky and also this is bugged right now which i'm sure you guys know about for my other build video i was using a convert all companion damage to dark magic you guys can try that out but honestly i don't think that's great um, a lot of you guys might 
ask why don't you use the soaked class item the reason is we just don't don't need it if we're using the delusion we're going to be soaking the enemies anyway we don't need to you know waste our class item to be able to do that you always want to get one that's going to roll double knot and spell sniper i believe you can get it for literally every other roll that i've mentioned here and you want to have spell damage and all damage dealt you could also get spell critical hit chance if you're low on spell crit uh, currently with my spell setup, I have hundred percent crit chance. I'll talk about how you guys can get that, but it's actually fairly easy to get, but it really depends on your spell. Ultimately, just try to get spell damage and try to get double knot. Any amount of double knot will be pretty good. Even if it's like plus one or plus two, it'll still be a drastic damage increase. So talking about a lot of the spells, uh, you guys have a ton of options here. Ultimately, my favorite to use is the impaling spike with a buff meister. The reason is because I want my pixies to do as much damage as possible. And the ice spike, I like that it has four charges. Mine's really good also because it's primordial. This does a whole bunch of damage. This has a really high base crit, has a low cooldown. The four charges, I can just spam them out. And I really like it in chaos chambers for being able to just see a guy and snap him away from existence far away. However, this is not going to be the best for bossing. For bossing, you want a triple ice spike that's going to have like times three or times four projectiles. These are going to do really, really good damage in terms of how you want to set this up. So ultimately, if you want one spell to do as much damage as possible, you want to use a buff meister with zap and kachow. This is going to give you 80% spell damage and more ability damage as well. So then your one spell, you're really buffing your one spell. But I also like this because it's going to increase our Pixies damage and our Pixies are going to be really, really good for the bosses, right? But you certainly don't have to use a Buff Meister. If you want to use an Ice Spike plus a Sunder for mobbing, if you want to use double spitting Ice Spikes, if you want to use uh, multiple triple Ice Spikes, if you want to use two Buff Meisters to just have 100% uptime on that and just buff the crap out of your Pixies, you can do all kinds of things. Does your Buff Meister need to be Cryo? No, you can have a, a Dark Magic one for more survivability if you want. The uh, Cryo one is going to be a little bit better because it's going to pull from spell damage always, but it shouldn't really matter because all your damage is doing spell damage anyway, so I don't think that it matters, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, the guys that know all about that will tell me that I'm stupid in the comments, so feel free to do that. Ultimately though, the Ice Spikes are going to be what's best. You could even use a Magic Barrage. The problem with the Magic Barrage is that it's just it's only two projectiles that is really high damage, but you only have one spell cast and the crit chance is low. If you want to check what your spell crit is, it's whatever the spell that is in your left slot is, and then you go to skills, and then you go to hero stats, and you check your critical hit chance, and I'm at 103%. The reason for that is that my base crit on this is 26%, and then within the skill tree, I'm going to have 7 to the spell sniper, which is 84%, and then we also, but this is multiplicative, and then we have the 68% in here, and then on my rings, I have some spell crit as well. It's pretty hard to get 100%, but even if you get like 80% and you have a ice spike here that's going to have multiple projectiles, you're going to have almost a 100% chance every time that you cast it to get at least one of those to crit. And it's just one of those crit or blast gas procs, it's going to do insane damage. These are ultimately what's going to be the best for bossing. The Sunders, I think, are just the best for having fun. Uh, you could use some Arcane Bolts just for more fun if you wanted to. I, I'll leave the save in the in my Discord channel, of course, if you guys want to try out all the different spells. And if you have any other spell recommendations, feel free to leave it down below. But these are the ones that I prefer to use. And ultimately, I think Buff Meister plus Ice Spike is the best for Chaos Chambers and for killing bosses really quickly. But feel free to use whatever you want. For the class item, I have a Frenzied Wrath. You want Frost Damage and Spell Shot Power. You could also get Dark Magic here if you wanted to. All damage dealt, insanely good. And then it's a Frenzied Wrath, which is going to give you extra companion damage after you kill an enemy. Stacks up five times. Really good. There's not a whole lot of options on the neck. I would just don't even worry about it being a Frenzied Wrath. Honestly, just try to get Frost Damage and Spell Shot Power and then all damage dealt. For the shield, you guys have a few options here. So I always use the Curse Whip for as much damage as possible. If you want the build to be more survivable, which is pretty easy. I mean, you have pretty good survivability already. You could have this enchant here where when health is below 50%, you're gonna regenerate some of your health and gain extra damage. So overall, that's a really good enchant. But also, if you just want a shield with super good survivability, you could take off gla uh, Glass Cannon and put on um, whatever the one is called, Mage Armor. You could put that on and then use a Desperate Ancient Deity, which will give you extra frost damage by default, but also the ward capacity and damage resistance here is insane. I got this traded to me, so I don't know if this roll is like 100% legitimate. I'm not really using it with this build, but that's just an idea for you guys. Or you could use a Bad Egg. The Bad Egg is fairly decent for survivability, and it's also going to give you movement seed, melee damage, and bonus dark magic damage when the ward is depleted. So overall, that's pretty good. For the rings, I kind of mentioned this already. You just want it to be spell damage, and you want to get spell crit chance and spell crit damage. That's really good. This ring is pretty much perfect here. I have a bit too much spell crit with this. I'm like well over 100% because it's a mood ring, so it's going to give us double the effectiveness. 
It would probably be better if I had like only one of these with spell crit and then another one that's just full spell crit will hit damage, but that's nearly impossible to get. And that would probably be a little bit too OP anyways. That's pretty much it for the gear. In terms of the enchants, you guys have actually an insane amount of options. There's also a lot of uh, restrictions when it comes to this. I'll leave down below a list to an enchanting table that's going to have all of the restrictions and also show you guys all the enchants because there's a lot of different ones. Because we're not using action skills, we're pretty much locked to on spell cast ones. Ultimately, what I think is going to be the best is on spell cast increased damage up by 15%. On spell cast increased gun damage, which is going to increase your double knot damage. On spell cast increased elemental damage by 20%. On spell cast increased frost damage. And then on spell cast increased dark magic damage. In terms of your other options here, you can get one that is enchanted spell shot after casting a spell, increased gun damage by 20%, which will work for double knot, and the fire rate will increase your pixie's fire rate. You'd also get, like I mentioned, the ward enchant when health is below 50%, regenerate some health, and gain 30% extra damage dealt. That's pretty much it for the build. The build is slightly complicated, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave it down below, and I'll try to answer as much as possible. Right now, I just want to do a chaos chamber run for you guys. I'm going to be using what is my preferred setup, which is the ice bike plus the buff meister, but of course, you guys can use whatever. If you want to use two spells, that'll still do perfectly well i just think this is best for doing the chaos chambers as fast as possible i like the ice spikes kind of for that reason right there is you just see somebody you can kind of just snap them out of existence you don't have to like wait to be able to see somebody or anything like that or get close to them i guess i should say and also i like that the four charges means that we're going to have our uh, kill skills activated a ton so ultimately i think that's the best the uh, sunders are a lot of fun to use if i'm being honest though those are one of my favorites in the whole game but the problem is that there's, there's not enough mob density for like the elemental fissure splitting out to be super, super powerful. And um, ultimately, if I'm trying to do the run as fast as possible, those aren't the best option for that. But as you can see, the pixies carry, the spells do a whole bunch of damage per hit. And honestly, the build just a lot of fun to use. Ultimately, I wish that pixies weren't as broken, but if you don't want the pixies to be carrying, you know, you don't have to. You can set it up to be a full spell build and it'll still do insanely well. I kind of just wanted to take advantage of both because ultimately I enjoy using what's like absolutely the best, right? And uh, that's what I think that this build is. It's one of the one of the best in the whole game. I think that if I swap the class item, it would be a good bit better, but I kind of want to retain the fantasy of having both of the elements play. But what can you do? I'm really hoping, I was really disappointed, to be honest with you guys, that um, this Thursday we didn't get like a balancing patch really. I mean, they buffed the ARs, woohoo. Um, I was really looking forward to some claw some claw buffs. I'll probably make my claw build tomorrow, but I was literally like waiting for there to be claw buffs to do it. I, I guess they think that the capstone change they did is enough, but I kind of disagree. Um, also, I expected them to nerf this, so I was waiting, I was waiting to make this video because I expected Double Knot or Pixies to get nerfed, so... I was going to build this accordingly. But I don't know if they're not going to do balancing patches all that often anymore. If they're just going to do tiny ones like the AR. I don't really have a lot of ideas left. I would appreciate if you guys could let me know down in the comments if there's a certain build that you're interested in seeing. Um, and you guys have any ideas for me. Because there's not anything that like I really have on on the horizon that I'm like super interested in making. See you later, dude. Um, I'm kind of just... I don't know, waiting for there to be balancing updates and I'll probably do my Clawbringer build and I maybe have like one or two other options, maybe like a Spore Warden one or something and then I'm kind of just done. Um, I don't really like just like, there's a lot of builds that you can make in this game but I kind of, I don't know, I don't really like making things that are just like, haha, just like fun and, and quirky and different, you know, I usually like making things that are just like really powerful and if I feel like I've already made like the best version of build for that class, I don't feel like there's another reason to do it, you know. If I've made two builds for uh, spell shot plus Stabmancer and both of them are insanely good and I make a third one and the third one isn't as good as the the first two it kind of feels like well you know why am I even why am I even making it even if it's like fun to use I think a lot of people there is like a market for like super fun to use and like weird weird builds but ultimately I've kind of just never really done that sort of thing so it's kind of difficult to continue to make videos when I feel like I've already done the best stuff and the best the best doesn't really change because we're not getting those those balancing updates so i don't know i'm kind of just i'm kind of just talking at you guys now because the gameplay isn't super interesting you guys kind of get the gist of what's going on i'm just running around and run around and sniping people with the ice spikes um if you guys were wondering yes the ice spikes can they do have a bug now where sometimes they just don't deal damage it's really not fun but ultimately it's not that big of a deal when you're like running around in chaos chambers I just wouldn't recommend using the single ice spike on bosses. 
it can do good damage, like I, I guess you guys probably saw in the intro clip there. It can do good damage against the bosses, but is it like the best for that? Probably not. I think that the other ones are because they, they proc stuff faster. Look, we're already on the boss, and our pixies are kind of going to carry against this guy, but yeah, as you see, the build is pretty, pretty strong, pretty strong. Throw out the pixies, and yeah, he kind of gets, kind of gets clapped up. Kind of gets clapped up, sir. Hope you guys enjoy the the build though. There's a lot of different ways to set it up. Ultimately, some are easier than others. I would rec I'd highly recommend just experimentation because a lot of things are pretty weird with this game when it comes to double knot and stuff. But ultimately, yep, that's pretty much it for the run. I don't know how fast we did that. 432. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Top 30 percent, I guess. People are speed hacking through the levels. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe. 80% of you guys aren't subscribed. I don't know what you're doing, even though I basically just explained that I don't have many more videos to make. But subscribe anyways, because you like me. All right, I'll see you guys later. Peace.